my lord and my god, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer for it will. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. A few years ago, I was chatting with the bishop who ordained me, Bishop Javier Echevarria. Among other things, he gave me a piece of advice that I have tried to keep in mind ever since. He said that when reading the Gospels, I should try to pay attention to every single word that God has wanted to leave written. You may recall the words of origin that we should venerate every word of a scripture, as we do with every particle of the consecrated host. That's how we should receive them. At the time when I heard Bishop Chevaria say those words, I wrote them down, but didn't pay much attention to them. It was only later, as I was going through the pages of the Gospel, that I realized more and more how many little things in Scripture that I had never paid attention to. I don't know if this happens to you as well, but at times, when I need to prepare a homily or a meditation like this one, I go to the Scriptures and check what Gospel it is I need to comment upon. Today, I saw it was the healing of Simon's mother-in-law. All right, I thought, I remember it. And that's precisely the problem. I remember what happened on that day, and straight away, a few topics came to mind. You, Jesus, cared for everyone around you. You took the woman by the hand, and she was healed. Your touch, Jesus, healed. She started serving you, Jesus, serving God. Or they brought you many more people and you were healing until late. Your love for everyone, your concern for people's suffering. Then you left before dawn to go to a place to pray. They need to pray. Then they searched for you and when they found you, they told you everyone was looking for you. People are looking for God. Then you told them you had to go to other places as well. Apostolates. <laughs> you see, this is how my brain works. I remember the gospel and then I think about topics. And this is precisely the problem. If you, like me, have read the gospels many times, you remember what happened and hover over the text to choose a topic. Now, I try to read the Gospel slowly. See, on leaving the synagogue we read today, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, those four, and no others, right? You, Jesus, have finished preaching and go to rest in Simon's house. That was the house you used to stay in when you were in Capernaum. You knew Peter and Andrew and all those living there. Then we read Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. Oh, you see, I remembered that you, Jesus, healed Simon's mother-in-law. But I didn't remember that they told you about her. Those are the little things that Bishop Echevarria was talking about. As you, Jesus, came into the house, they told you about Simon's mother-in-law. You came into the house, maybe asked for her, because you knew her well. And then you were told about her illness. And on reading that, I wonder, would you, Jesus, have healed the woman had they not told you about her? You, Jesus, knew she wasn't well. I mean, you, you, you are God, you know everything. But 
would you have stayed in that house, eating and drinking, waiting for them to mention her illness to you? It seems that you were expecting them to tell you about her. And then you acted. I remember your words, Jesus, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, when you said to us, When you pray, do not babble like pagans do, for they think they may be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And it elicits many times the question, if God knows what I need, why do I have to ask him for it? Fair enough. <laughs> why do we ask God for what we want if he knows what we need? Just like a mom knows her baby needs food or rest, she doesn't wait until she's asked by her child to do what the baby needs. So, if God knows I need something, and he loves me more than any mum can love her baby, would he not rush to offer me what I need? Now, as I said before, at times we read the gospel too fast. We pass over your words, Jesus, too quickly. The text of St. Matthew I mentioned says, when you pray, Do not babble like pagans do. Why? Well, because they think they will be heard because of their many words. So, so do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. You see, it doesn't say don't try to ask for anything because your father knows what you need. Instead, it says, Do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Eh? In other words, when you pray, don't think you need to convince God with eloquence. You ask, but without complex speeches. Of course, you, Lord, want us to ask. In the same sermon, a few verses later, you say to us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. It is pretty clear to me, Lord, that you were glad they told you about Simon's mother-in-law, that you were happy to see people bringing the sick to you, putting in front of you the loved ones, who needed help. How wonderful it is to pray for others, to bring them to you in our prayers, to ask you to help them, assist them, to heal them, to sanctify them. How could it be otherwise? This is often the content of our prayer. To come to you, Lord, like Simon, and mention to you that his mother-in-law is not feeling well. She was sick with a fever. It wasn't the most spectacular of your miracles, <laughs> like healing a paralytic man or giving sight to a blind person. Just a temperature. But for you, Lord, there's nothing small. There's no suffering of men too small for your compassionate heart. After healing Simon's mother-in-law, People started doing the same, bringing those they loved, all who were ill or possessed by demons. All of them, says the Gospel. Yeah. You spent the final hours of that day healing them and finished late, and then went to bed late, and then early, before dawn, you went to pray. And What did you pray about? What did you talk with God the Father about? Well, maybe about those same people you had healed, those you were trying to save, those who need your intercession. You talked to God the Father about us. Jesus, 
I do have to bring to you many people I love, people I care for, that need your help. Now you may want to continue your prayer like me. I will tell you, Jesus, about them, just like they told you about Simon's mother-in-law, and you will heal them all. Mary, my Immaculate Mother, remember when you are in front of God to tell Him good things about us, to bring to Him our needs, to ask for your children, Mother, whatever they need. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.